we have done our calculations now we are then now proceeding to the age analysis which is c our age analysis if you go back to your question paper we have done we are done with question 1.1 and question 1.2 so we now want to do question 1.3 with figures and you have three columns here name of data with figures we have three columns here one two and three right and then you have 1.4 1.4 is just a question right 1.3 it says here refer to information c explain three different problems highlighted by the data's age analysis provide the name of a data or the figure in each case six marks so we need to refer to information c information c is on page five of your question paper the following age analysis was compiled on the 30th of september 2021 there is an age analysis there the age analysis we are not we are anal we are analyzing here the performance of our data so if you look at the age analysis you are given the name of the data you are given the credit limit the balance owing and then the performance how we are we collecting from that particular data so we want to see the problems we want to identify the question is asking us to explain three different problems highlighted by the age analysis. Let's look at the problems. We are looking for the problems in this age analysis. In the performance of our data, we want to look for. Remember, the data are given 30 days to pay. So what we are noticing us, what we are noticing here, is that some data are not paying us on time. Uh, like Jeep Lom, there is an average, there is an amount which is recorded in 60 days, which is expected to be collected in 60 days, which is 20,000. So, here we can talk. The first problem is slow payers. Debt is not paying on time. We have debtors who are not paying on time here. We can make example of J Plom. Remember, debtors are given only 30 days. But to J Plom, if you look at J Plom, there is an amount of 20,000 recorded under 60 days, which then tells us that this data is a slow payer. This is a problem that we are also, with. there are also others. If you look at OMAC, there is, there, there is an amount of 4,000 written under more than 90 days, more than 90 days. So we can see that there is a problem of debtors who are not paying on time. And another case that we are looking at here is that if you look at OMAC, there is poor internal control of our debtors here. There is poor internal control over data. Why are we saying that? OMAC is owing us, there is an amount which is reflected under 90 days, which then tells us that we continue selling, but there is an amount which of 2,000 under current. We have currently sold to OMAC for 2,000 when we have realized that OMAC is not paying us correctly. There is an amount that he paid which is more than 90 days when debtors are only given 30 days there is 4000 more than 90 days continue selling on credit
to debtors whose accounts are overdue. So there's poor internal control of debtors. We are continuing selling on credit. So they, 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 we can just re, just mention because the instruction here it says just the name of a debtor. Let's just mention the name. The name of a debtor is Omark. The name of a debtor is Omark. And current is showing that we have currently sold to him or her for two thousand rands when there is more than 90 days 4000 more than 90 days an amount of 4000 that is owing us for more than 90 days but we have sold to omark for 2000 so we there is poor internal control of our debtors we continue to sell to the debtors even when the accounts are overdue Another problem that we are noticing in this debtors aid analysis, if we are looking at, at it carefully, you will note that debtors are given credit limits, like ZPI. The credit limit is 22,000, but the balance owing is 29,000. So, some debtors... have exceeded credit limit. Some debtors have exceeded credit limit. The name of a debtor is ZPI, PHI, ZPHI. The limit is over the limit. Over the limit is over the limit by how much? By 7,000. The credit limit is 22,000, but the balance owing is 29,000. So that is a problem. These are the three problems that we have identified when looking at this age analysis. What we have identified is that debtors are not paying us on time. We give them 30 days to pay, but for some of them, they come back after 60 days. Some of them, they even come back after 90 days which is a problem. There is also poor internal control over our debtors. We continue to sell to the debtors even when their accounts are overdue. We made mention of OMAC. His account is more than 90 days overdue, but there is a current 2000 which has been sold to him or her. And then we have also noted that some debtors have exceeded their credit limit, which also tells us that we do not have a proper control over our debtors. ZPI was given 22,000 as a credit limit, but the balance owing is 29,000. So this person is now over the limit by 7,000. And then the last question in question one, the last question in question one, it says provide two points, okay? It is taken from, let's go to the last question, which is 1.4. It says, refer to information D, provide two points to support the internal auditor's concern that Susan's job description could lead to potential fraud. If we go to information D on page five, let's look at the, Susan, at, at, at the job description of Susan. Susan, a member of the sales staff, is also responsible for, this is a member of the sales staff, but is also responsible for collecting cash from customers who choose to pay in this way, receiving goods returned, and issuing credit notes to customers who return goods. The internal auditor is not happy with Susan's job description as he feels it has the potential for fraud, which could lead to loss of cash and trading stock. So this person is a member of the sales staff so he's responsible for selling but at the same time is the one collecting cash from customers receiving goods returned by customers and issuing credit notes so what we are noting here is that there is no division of duties no division of duties this could lead to fraud there is no division of duties no division of duties there is no division of duties and this could lead to fraud we can't have one person doing different tasks many times so there is no division of duties 
and we are also noting that there is no proper supervision if it is one person doing all these duties we can clearly say that there is no proper supervision over this person so then that is why the internal auditor is concerned that this might lead to fraud because if there is no division of duties like in accounting we strongly re recommend that there should be division of justice a person collecting cash should not be the the one who will be issuing or collects cash and also be responsible for banking that person should collect cash submit it to another person to do banking that is why we call division of duties so that if it is one person performing different tasks which are related then there is a potential for fraud there so they were saying that there should be division of duties but in this case of susan there is no division of duties and which then tells us that if he is the one responsible for all these tasks so it means there is no also proper supervision and that might lead to fraud so this brings us to an end of our question one from november 2021 exam paper two so we have come to an end thank you